going to be talking about um, doing doing the literature review for STEM. A few things before we get started is we are recording this session um, to post on the dissertation bootcamp website for anyone who is unable to make this session today. So please just keep that in mind um, because if you're uncomfortable either voicing your question or showing your face or anything like that, we just want you to know that we want we want to keep this a safe space for you. However, um, if you want to talk, I am always happy to hear from you guys. Additionally, we have um, Denise Wetzel here with us today, who is going to be my moderator. So basically what that means is while I'm showing you guys some stuff, she's going to help me keep an eye on the chat and either answer questions for you or um, she will draw my attention to the question in the chat if I hadn't noticed it right, uh, noticed it in a moment. Um, and Additionally, we have our closed captioning turned on to hopefully help make it a little easier uh, with, you know, me talking and showing you things. But uh, we like to say that it is not perfect. Sometimes it does misunderstand what is being said. So just please keep that in mind uh, if you are reading, uh, reading the closed captioning. I'm sorry. Also, I like to say I'm kind of informal presenting. And so if at any point you have questions, please feel free to ask them. Uh, or if you need me to repeat something, like how I access something, um, please feel free to stop and ask me to show that again. I would rather you guys get the information you need when you need it rather than um, let me just go on until I ask if there are any questions. Additionally, I will be doing this um, pretty much all live demo, so we can have a lot of fun with this. So what I will be doing is I will be sharing my screen. That way you guys can see what I am doing, because for this one, we have a lot of different disciplines and things like that going on. And so I try to keep it pretty varied uh, in what's happening. So one of the very first things that you guys might ask, include. Sorry, and please excuse me as I switch like this because my camera's on one computer and my display's on another computer. So I kind of go back and forth with where I'm looking. Um, but one of the very first things you guys might be asking is, okay, I have to do this big literature review for, set, for, my, for my dissertation, for my paper, for an article I'm writing. Where do I get started? Well, one of the first things that we've done is we've actually created a resource that will kind of help remind you guys of different steps and different processes to get there. So I'm going to show you guys how to access that. So from the library's homepage, lib.fsu.edu, we go to research guides. And now you can go through and you can kind of scroll through the slide, scroll through this list or whatnot. I personally, would you use the search box just to make it a little quick? As you can see, I searched lit review in this before. If you run a search for literature review, you're going to see quite a few results pop up. But if you click on writing a literature review in STEM, that's the one we're looking for. Uh, I do like to say there are ones for humanities and ones for the social sciences. So if maybe you're working on something interdisciplinary, they might be a good place to look. For the most part, these guides are, they follow kind of the same outline, but we make different suggestions of maybe databases or journals to potentially look at. So that's just something to keep in mind. So on this page, what I really like to do is We'll go through some of these tabs uh, fairly thorough, but we don't have to spend a lot of time in each one for this hour. Um, but on this homepage, it kind of helps remind you guys what the process of writing a lit review um, is like. You're gonna get started, you're gonna have your topic, you're gonna start searching the literature and then making an evaluation. So does this fit my topic? Does it not? And thank you, Denise, for putting the link to that guide up. I meant to do that and I forgot. Um, and you're going to be evaluating your literature. Does this fit my topic? Does it maybe have the right population or are they using the right type of method? If they do, not then obviously you're going to have to maybe go back to research or maybe you find that your topic has already been done and then you have to go back and restart your topic 
But then, as you can see, we kind of have these arrows to show that sometimes it's not just going to be the straight line. Sometimes you have to go back and redo something. This is not a one-stop shop process. It is something that you kind of have to keep working on. Additionally, my name, my picture's right there. You guys are always welcome to contact me from this website. You can schedule an appointment with me or email me right from there. Uh, something else I like to mention is if you were ever maybe confused about what a lit review is, we have some tutorials here and some definitions about what a literature review is. So we're going to take just a quick moment to discuss that. A lit review is basically a summary of the literature that has gotten you to that point, the point of which you are writing. Maybe it is talking about, or maybe you want to discuss a new method for an experiment. So your lit review would be discussing the previous methods that have been used to perform that experiment and maybe how you've come to the point of designing this new method, okay? So you basically just need to know where we've been in order to know where you want to go. And that's the point of a lit review. It's to show that you've done the research and you know what is out there. So for example, in a article that is going to be published in a journal, it might be a page or like two or three paragraphs. In your dissertation, it's obviously probably like a whole chapter or more, and you're going to be citing references throughout. So this will be a good time to collect those types of sources that you might need. Okay, so we're going to come back up, and we are actually going to skip you know, kind of that select refine a topic area because you guys, chances are, if you're at the point where you're at a dissertation, you probably already know what your topic is or you at least have a good idea. So we're not gonna go over that too much, especially because I can't help you choose your topic. That's a discussion between you, your professors and what your interest is. Um, this getting started tab is basically that what is a lit review? and what we can expect. And I did forget, I, I apologize, I should meant to click on this earlier, but right here, number two, build or polish your research toolbox. Basically what we are going over today are some tool, I'm trying to help you build a little toolbox to hopefully make that lit review process a little bit easier. So these are just some general tools to get started. So one of the very first things that I always suggest anyone who is about to start a lit review is to create a search log. So on this site, I have um, some sample search. There are two search logs. There's a sample search log that's filled out and a blank search log you are welcome to use. Um, now, people like to do some different things. This is, once again, just an example. The point of this is this will help you keep track of what you're doing because chances are you're going to do a search and then you are going to leave it. Okay. You're going, it's nighttime. You're going to go do your next thing the next day because in a lit review, especially for your dissertation, you're not going to find everything you need in one sitting. So what might happen, life gets in the way. It might be a week. It might be two weeks, a month, there's going to be gaps in times of when you search. And in that case, it is very easy to forget what databases you searched in, what search terms you were using, what kind of limiters you used. And that's where a search log comes in handy. If you keep tracks of the dates you searched, where you searched, and what you searched, it is going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of time. Because then when your professor goes, have you been staying up to date on your research? You can come back and you can tell them exactly what you did and when you did it. So this is just an example. As you can see, um, adding in the topic. So this topic is pretty broad, but they're saying, okay, I've searched psych info. I performed three different psych info searches on the same day. But if you notice, I changed the search term a couple of different times and kind of like what maybe made some notes about why I made those search, why I made those changes. I recorded the number of hits we've done. And if I did anything with those, did I export it to a citation management? Did I download copies of those articles and save them somewhere? Notes for yourself to save yourself some headache. I really suggest that. 
and there is this download uh, downloadable search log. You are welcome. If you like using this, I suggest it. If you prefer to keep it in a different tool or maybe you want a different format of how you do it, all I do is I really suggest you do this because then if you come to one of the librarians and say, hey, I am not finding anything on my topic and you happen to have one of these to show us what you've done, then that is going to put you leaps and bounds because we're not going to be trying to reduplicate any efforts and we can hopefully get you rolling a lot faster. Okay, so that's the very first thing when we get started. We're creating our search log for um, our topic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start looking for review articles. So this is number... 2.1 on the lib guide. Okay. Now, a review article is an amazing wealth of information, I like to say, because what they are doing is these are other researchers who didn't do just a lit review. Their entire article that they published is a review of the literature, and they start going in and trying to identify gaps um, where literature, where, where maybe the literature hasn't had anything filled in. They start trying to draw conclusions. They start trying to knit together lit, little bits and pieces. A really good example might be, for example, in healthcare and nursing. Okay, They do um, these very complicated reviews called systematic reviews and meta-analysis, where they take clinical trials that are kind of like one-stop shops at various locations, but are all studying maybe the same, the same illness, we'll say. And they're looking at like the same general type of population and they pull all of that information together and say, OK, from this area of the country, we know this type of information from this area. We know this. Now, what's the broader implica implications to those studies and how can we use them to better understand it as a war as more of a whole? OK, so. What we're going to do is we are going to jump in to our handy dandy Google Scholar. So what I'm going to talk about today, or one of the things we're going to talk about today, and helps when you spell things, right? Just saying. I'm a horrible speller, so please forgive me, um, is different ways we can maybe use Google Scholar as well as some of the library databases. I really want to try and give you guys kind of a breadth of uh, options because not everything I'm going to show you is going to work for everyone. So in Google Scholar, we can search for a topic. Um, I'm going to pick a topic right now, but if anyone would like me to try doing some searches or showing examples of the topic that um, uh, your topic or in your discipline, go ahead and throw those into the chat right now. Um, so we let's go ahead and we are going to do neuroscience. Okay, we'll do neuroscience methods. Okay, what are we gonna get is we're gonna get a lot of results right here. Quite a bit of pieces of information. Um, but when I said neuroscience methods, that could mean almost anything. If we put, and then I always mix this up, is in title review. I always do that. It's because I always want to, um, uh, space it out, and it's not supposed to be spaced out when it's like this. Review. What that just did, if you guys noticed, we went over to, we had over a million hits right here. We had over a million hits right here. Now we're down to about 41 because what this little bit of uh, information we just put into the search bar is we said in title review. So in the title of the article, it has to have the word review. So that is one quick, easy way to find types of review articles. Now, it is up to you as the researcher to read that information, determine if it is appropriate, if it is in fact the type of review you're looking for, and um, if it fits with what your topic is. Um, it's really great, it's really handy, and it's a great way to start mining um, like those 
core articles, the, the, you know, that golden piece, the, the, that foundation article that, you know, how certain researchers are get, are always talked about in your discipline. Okay. Some researchers are like the epitome of like, they are the founder of this, but maybe you don't know what their articles are or how to find them. Chances are in review articles, a lot of those are going to be mentioned in their citation. So if we for example, I'm picking a random article and we'll open it up. Okay, say I read this article and it fits with what my topic is. If I come all the way down to their citations, oops, scrolled a little too far, you're going to notice, especially in review articles, there's a lot of citations, a lot of references. But as you're reading it, make notes of the ones that you're like, oh, that's really interesting. I wonder what that study was about. Or that's a great definition. Let's go look at that original article. You can use the references in your review articles to help you find those foundation articles and to help you start understanding the more back history you know, things that happened a little while ago, perhaps, um, of your topic. And then you're able to find those types of articles a lot faster, a lot easier. Additionally, if we go back to our Google Scholar, and I meant to open that in a new tab and I didn't, this is a little trick I love to show people. So, excuse me. And this is something you want to remember is you need to stay up to date on your lit review, okay? So what's happening now? Say you find the article that you're like, I love this. This is a great article. It fits perfectly with what I'm doing. Look at who has cited that article, okay? So now this is moving forward in time. When we look at references, we move backward in time. When we look at who has cited an article, we're moving forward. Google Scholar, you click our little cited by. These are the 64 papers that Google Scholar found that cites the original paper we were just looking at. And you can even follow the site. If you find another article you love, you can follow that citation. Okay. And it's a great way to find a lot of information without having to redo your searches time and time again. But we are going to get into it. You do have to actually do some searches because just following citation chains is not going to find you everything that you need to complete your lit review. So that is some fun little tips that we can choose. Um, we can also use reviews when we search databases. So let me open up a new tab real quick. And we'll go ahead. I'm not seeing any one request a specific discipline right now. So I am going to go with kind of a wider um, uh, database and that's Web of Science. I love Web of Science, guys. Um, so that's just getting through their database tab and going to Web of Science. And why I wait for my computer to load. Okay. Let's go ahead and we are going to do open pit mining, right? I spelled that right. Yes. Okay. And we'll do a search. What? Why did I just have that problem? Oh, I'm going to be mad if we're having troubles today. Well, not mad at you guys, mad at my computer and whatever's going on. Uh, we'll go by subjects. We'll come down to our physical sciences. This is something else to keep in mind is getting to different databases and different database suggestions by going to our database tab by subject. And as you can see, we have like life sciences. So that's going to be kind of like biology, nutrition. Our health sciences cover all different types of psychology with art therapy, exercise science, nursing. Um, I do say psychology is falls under our social science drop down menu. Okay. Someone else is having web of science being down for them. So now I don't feel as bad. <laughs> I thought it was just my computer. Um, 
and then we have things for math and computer science, but we'll go to physical science and we'll do earth science because I was going to show you open pit mining. As you can see right there, Web of Science is one of our favorite databases. It's oftentimes going to show up in that best bet, but we'll go ahead and we'll go to Science Direct. Again, this is kind of a big, just general kind of database. And we'll do open pit mining to start our search. Okay, we have over 21,000 results. Now, um, uh, now what we can do is we can either go into our advanced search and add the term um, and review, review, yeah, um, to our search. And that brought us down about 10,000 results. Or you could also always come to this article type and um, you could do review articles. Now, uh, it doesn't specify what type of review, so you could get a wide variety of review articles. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind if you're looking for specific types of articles, then I would maybe suggest limiting it to a review and then you're just going to have to maybe do a little hand sort sorting. Um, chances are if they don't allow you to limit by specific review types. And here we go. So that was a quick and easy way we were able to limit our search results down to find those review articles. Okay, and I had, do have instructions for doing some of these things in this LibGuide. Additionally, there is the annual reviews journal collection. Sorry, I'm just, I'm opening up tab after tab. <laughs> Oh, geez. Okay. One moment. That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. That is very true. Research loves to be um, live demo searching loves to do this. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for one moment while I clear the cache um, of my web browser real quick. And I apologize apologize. I'll jump in while you say that. Thank you so much, that. Denise. I really appreciate that. No problem. Um, I'm going to so, turn off my camera while I do that. I'll just say that I have found that, especially if you use Firefox, there is a greater need to clear your cache when it comes to working with um, like Web of Science. So if you're ever wanting to, or running into some of these errors, I that's really helpful. Um, to, to look at doing that. And um, every browser is a little different, right? Um, when we look at like, fi like Firefox, it doesn't run a new script every time you're opening a new tab. But when you're using like Chrome, every single Chrome tab that you have open is like having a new window open. So it's gonna, you know, function slightly differently. Just like Kelly, I use Web of Science all the time and therefore it's literally sits on my toolbar here as a search. Um, I went and looked at open pit mining. And so I can do the search for that one here and it's gonna open up. And so you can come in and kind of take a look at these results. And one thing I really like about this, um, you can find these highly cited papers in a field. So if you are doing like say open something with open pit mining, even though you'd have 4,700 results this way, if I look at these highly cited papers, I can actually click on this and click refine and I'm gonna get down to 20, but these are the papers that you know are having many, many citations, especially when we're looking older, when you look usually at like an older paper, not always the case, um, but you're going to see more citations because it's been around a little bit longer, but this is going to help you find some of those seminal works within the field, right? If something's being cited 50 times, that a lot of times makes me think, hmm, maybe I should read this, what's going on? So you can actually come, and then if I was to go and read this, um, I can take a look at it and see, you know, the keywords, what it's about. Hopefully this is something that's related to my um, search, what I'm working on. And then if it is, 
I can come down and you can actually take a look at the site it references. So um, it has 59 site it references, but like we mentioned, it was cited 50 times. So if this is something that I'm interested in, I can actually click on this nice little 50 right here. And now I can see those 50 articles that are citing it. So you can kind of, like um, Kelly mentioned, you can chain forward, you're looking forward in time. And so now I'm seeing like, you know, this one. And so if I'm a mechanical engineer, maybe this is something that's interesting to me. And Kelly, feel free to jump in whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I'll stop sharing. Uh, no, thank you so much, Denise. I really appreciate your help with that. Um, I really don't know what was going on right there. So <clears throat> we were kind of doing some general searching of the literature. I'll turn my camera back on. That way you have someone to look at for a minute. Um, we have the, we were just doing some general searching and clearing my cache allowed me to get into my web of science. So something that we're going to do is now we're going to talk about, we were talking about finding those review articles, okay, finding um, some information. Now we're going to talk about finding the literature, searching our literature. And at the same time, we're going to talk about finding our scholarly journals, like the places that are your, your go-tos, okay? Um, we're going to talk about these at the same time. So really this search the literature is just kind of like a reminder of, you know, use the search templates. And here are maybe some suggestions of different types of places you could look depending on if you want like a thesis or maybe you want an article or a book, okay? These are just reminders of those types of places. So if we go into Web of Science and we'll go ahead, not, we're not gonna do, we're not searching diet, um, uh, climate change. Let's search. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, I had a really good example, and then after the cash, I totally forgot about it. So, forgot. So we're going to go ahead and take their oil spill um, example that they suggest, and we're going to run our search. Um, just as Denise was talking about, um, you can click into articles that look interesting. But something I want you to maybe consider is if you're looking at something that's like a highly cited filter or, you know, those articles that perhaps your professor talks a lot about or that are really um, the articles that you really identified as being relevant to your topic, look at where they're being published, okay? So maybe we want the science of the total environment. Um, and when we click on that in, this is in Web of Science, again, we get some quick information, okay? So they're letting us know just some general pieces of information about it, like uh, what's the, I, the ISSN, if you want to look it up in the library catalog. Um, they tell you kind of what the research domain is. So this is environmental science and ecology. And then they have information about impact factor. This is really more for when you're publishing. It may not necessarily be very important when you are doing your research. But what we can then do is do uh, science of total environment and we can do a quick Google search for them. Um, science of total environment. And we can take a look on the publisher's website. It's going to give you an idea of the types of things that you might see in here. And if you come to the library's website and you go right down here from the main page to journal search. And science, again, it helps when you spell things right. <laughs> Science of the total environment. We do a search. It's going to tell you if the if FSU has access to it. That way, you know you're able to read the articles. And so, if I come right down here and I click our little drop down, or where it says Science Direct, it is now logging me in through FSU system. That way, I can search and see what kind of articles are coming up. Um, this is a great way to, you know, kind of help you stay on top of the literature, just scanning um, basically the, uh, the uh, table of contents 
of the journals when they come out to see if anything strikes you as interesting or perhaps related to your topic. So that's one little trick that will help you stay up to date and also is going to help you find some of the main journals that are going to be relevant to you. Um, as well as um, coming in here, so we are actually going to go, let's go to SciTech Premium. Oh, apologies, it's my tabs wanting to be annoying. And then we want our databases, SciTech S and SciTech Premium. So what we can do here, um, and I'm trying to just show you guys a wide variety of databases. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and we'll search um, robots. I don't know why, but robots just popped in my head right now. I know that's very broad, um, but as you can see, we have over 500,000 results. Something to remember is there is scholarly work um, and then there is peer reviewed scholarly work is, you know, conference papers, um, poster presentations, theses and dissertations, peer review are those journal or are those articles that are getting published in our scholarly journals that have gone through that rigorous process of being reviewed by other researchers. So if you come over to the side, um, especially big databases like things that are coming through ProQuest or um, Science Direct or um, EBSCO um, is they're going to have a source type limiter. And if we click on scholarly journals, it is now, you know, now we're not going to see the poster presentations. We're not going to see the conference talks because while those are important pieces of scholarship, they haven't gone through the peer review process. And so you just have to remember that when you talk about that information. OK, so you just all of this plays together, but you just have to remember, like you talk about those pieces in different ways when you use them in your research. And here we are going to see our variety of scholarly journals. And then if I come down to our publication titles, you're gonna see they give us these wonderful numbers that telling us what titles are publishing the most out of our um, topic that we've searched. So as you can see this IEEE transactions, we're getting a lot of results from them. So maybe that's the type, maybe that's a journal you wanna pay attention to as you, as you continue your work. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to double check our time. Another thing that is also a great resource to use, um, and I'm not gonna lie, a great way to help you find some more of those foundational articles is to look at other people's theses and dissertations. So there are, a, there are two ways to look for them. We have the finding FSU's theses and dissertations. So these are other dissertations that have been written by your, um, by, by written by people from FSU. There you go. Uh, and I actually need to fix that link. That link did not bring me where I wanted. So what we're just gonna quickly do, again, library's website. And what I like to do is just come right here from more ways to search down to theses and dissertations. And this is what's known as Diginal, which is the FSU's repository. And we can browse um, our theses and dissertations. So as you look right down here, theses and dissertations, you can look at all. So perhaps your major professor graduated from FSU. You could go out and see if you can find their, thes their, their dissertation and check it out. Or you can see what, what was published last year in your program or two years ago. Um, it's really great. And um, again, it's a great way of mining those pieces of information. So you're able to search, you know, by kind of title, date, relevancy. Um, an additional, uh, sorry, an additional source for theses and dissertations that's more global is our ProQuest theses and dissertation, theses and dissertations. 
Um, so I'm going to go to database and I'm actually going to go to type real quick for this one because we have theses and dissertation listed right there. And these are different databases that have a ton of different um, theses and dissertations. Okay. So depending on your topic, you might want to search in one of these, uh, one of these ones, but this um, dissertation theses global is very um, wide and it's going to have a lot of information. And we can actually even look up, you know, major professors, for example, like uh, the advisors. Um, and uh, Jay Chanton, or actually, you know what, we're just going to search this last name. This is a professor who's in the EOAS department. Um, and he, he's been here a while, so he should have some that pop up. And so here are 27 people's theses and dissertations where he was the advisor. So this might also be a good thing to go and look up for, um, to see what other types of topics your advisor has worked on. So that's kind of something different, a little ways to look. And if you notice, they're gonna tell you what references they use in their information. So that's going to, again, be a great way of finding those foundational articles. And don't be afraid to talk about someone else's dissertation in your dissertation. All you have to do is mention that this was a dissertation and this is what the significance of their work to your work. All right. We've talked a bit about following citations forward and backward. And this is just a quick reminder of citation chaining with, you know, little tips and tricks to remind you where I found those pieces of information. Um, but something I like to talk about with your citations is making sure you are managing your information. Okay. I don't care. There are people that use note cards. There are people that have pages, like a page dedicated to each article that they read where they can document their, um, like the methods, the, the big findings, um, anything that maybe went wrong. Okay. Just keep track. And so here we have two examples of using like a matrix template or a summary table. Oh, where'd it go? I knew I would choose the wrong one. One of these just uh, should have automatically brought, here we go. This is the one I meant to because it brings me right to it. But as you can see, you know, they have the information where they break it out for each of their papers that they're using. That way they don't have to go back and reread articles that they've already read. We're trying to save you time. So if you're keeping docu documented um, information, that way you don't have to go back and reread any of your articles, that's gonna be key and is going to save you a lot of time. Okay. Now, um, something we want to talk about just real quick. I'm not going to bore you guys talking about citation management. Uh, some of you may have attended Denise's Mendeley workshop that happened earlier this week. Just so you guys know, we do offer um, help for Zotero and EndNote. So do not be afraid to ask. These are a few additional options that you might want to consider. For example, you know, working with uh, latex. Perhaps you are an engineering uh, student and you, let, you, you prefer to write your documents in latex. Some of these are support, do support citations of latex. And that's going to be very helpful. So take a look at these. Trust me, if you just you know, as you're doing your searches and you put things in your citation manager, it is going to save you so much time at the end when you're writing that bibliography that is probably going to be at least over 100 different references. And you won't have to, you know, sit there and type for hours just to get all of those in. So that is one key thing to remember. Excuse me. We are also wanting to remember to keep current. I know there's not a lot on this page, but that's really because keeping current is up to you. Remembering to, you know, take a look at those journals that you identified as being, you know, key topics. Maybe when you 
kind of have refined your search enough to the point where you feel like it is very inclusive in and filters out what you don't want. Rerunning those searches at dis- a few distinct times before your writing session um, to see if any new results are coming up. You can also set up some data- databases and journals will allow you let you set up RSS feeds or even like you'll get, you could even set up alert emails that say, hey, from this search, we've added two new things this month that would would now come up. Those are some types of things that you can always take a look at. And I honestly do suggest, may, uh, suggest using. Uh, for example, if you wanted to set up an alert in Web of Science, what you would do is we would sign in and please forgive me i really hope this is the right one dang it okay i can't sign in so i can't show you exactly how it looks but basically what's going to go on is you'll click on searches and alerts and it's simply because i cleaned my cache and so now it doesn't remember my web of science email and i don't want to make you guys watch me change my figure out changing my password All it is, is you come in here and you would put in, you literally copy and paste the search that you used into it. And then you put your email address and then you choose how many times you want, how how often you would like to receive an update email and for how long. Um, In ProQuest, you can do something, in ProQuest type databases, you can do something similar with our save. Oh. That's our options, Um, all options, come on. Oh, my apology, it's not all options. Oh, I know where it is. Sorry, sometimes I forget when I'm switching from database to database (laughs) where I'm going. It's gonna be under your little researcher profile. Um, And that is something I did forget to mention is if you do create alerts with databases, you do have to create a login and that I suggest making it a little easier on yourself and like making it similar to your FSU credentials, but that's up to you. And it is pretty much the exact same process in something like ProQuest. Okay, so that is keeping up with our literature and then it comes time to writing, okay? Just remember guys, at some point you have to start writing. Um, And I love to point out, we at the library, we have things that talk about writing tips. I believe um, the Writing Center may have already come and talked to you. If not, they are coming soon. And they are going to be a great help to help you if you need um, some assistance with, you know, getting started or maybe arranging how your your paper flows. They're not going to sit there and grade your grammar for you, but they can be of help. Um, We always have like different uh, sources. So here we have um, some books about writing literature reviews and getting through that process fairly unscathed, I hope. Um, So I'm going to stop for a moment and take a sip of water. And if you guys have questions, if you would like me to review anything or maybe show you something that I haven't talked about that you were really hoping to see, out of today's workshop, please, this would be a great time to let me know what that is. Okay, question. Why is it so beneficial to search through databases versus just Google Scholar? Great question. So the reason why we want to search through databases and not just Google Scholar is Google Scholar likes to think it can find everything and that it knows everything. Thing is, it doesn't, okay? Um, Just like how one database, you know, doesn't have all the content that you're ever going to want and need, Google Scholar can't do it all as well. Additionally, um, if you have your Google Scholar set up appropriately, it can sometimes read that you're coming in through FSU but it doesn't always catch it. And if you're accessing some information through databases, um, you are going to have that connection to get those articles that you need a little easier. Additionally, um, sometimes in Google Scholar, I don't have Google Scholar open, but you guys might hear, you might have heard of something called ResearchGate. 
So ResearchGate is kind of like an open platform that scholars um, can sometimes post their papers to. And while a lot of them are true and they are, you know, that information that is legitimate and they just post like a free version of their article that's usually behind a paywall, there have been times where the kind of falsified information has been put out there and they claim that it's been uh, peer reviewed and published. So sometimes you need to take things with a grain of salt, whereas databases, they're not going to pull anything from something like uh, ResearchGate. They are pulling directly from those journals uh, in which that peer review process does happen. That is something about ResearchGate. It's not talked about a lot because it, it's gotten better but it is still an issue that you need to be aware of. Um, I do also want to encourage you guys with this this re this research guide is I didn't go over every single link we have in there simply because there is quite a bit. But if at any point you get stuck um, doing in your writing process or one of the steps, come in here, take a poke around, and maybe you'll find that magic little piece that you are missing, or you're always welcome to come and talk to me or talk to your subject librarian. We're always happy to talk to you guys. Okay, uh, a question we got, how do I refine the dissertation search to two authors? I can do one, but not two. A uh, quick question for that person. Are you searching, wh which database are you searching in? Uh, the FSU dissertations and theses. Okay, great. If we come to, dissertations and theses, Florida State only ProQuest. And we come to our advanced search here. I could look at either author or advisor or committee members. And I'm just going to copy our search right here. No, there are co-authors on paper. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we'll switch this over here and we're just doing a quick check and we'll do authors and we'll just see if they pop up in this ProQuest one. It doesn't look like it. So my guess is it might not actually be, a. it might not be a dissertation. It could potentially be um, maybe a, a a review by the two. Um, let's go ahead and we'll say anywhere. But again, this is searching the theses and dissertations. Um, we do have two dissertations where both of those names uh, are mentioned, um, one from 1995 and one from 2016. I am not sure if either of these are what you were looking for. And it does, but they are both related. So at least we know that much. They are um, both talking about music, but at very different times. Okay, wonderful. Um, and you can always, you know, if you're in a database, for example, in our web of science, if you wanted to try and find um, authors, a very easy way is to have these little drop down menus and do author. And um, we can plug in those last names and run a search because they're gonna look for any papers that have those two, those two authors. And in this one, unfortunately, we're not finding anyone, but we might find something like in, uh, this is that SciTech database we are in, which probably doesn't have anything and neither probably will Science Direct if it was along those same of music, those ideas of music. And guys, yeah, like I said, you can, if there's databases you like, you just switch, you know, where it says like things like topic or anywhere, you can switch it to, you know, authors and titles. And that is going to be a great way to help narrow your searches down. Thank you all very much for coming.